Hey everybody, welcome to this live stream where I'm going to be going over all the gear that I use to film when out on my outdoor adventures, the cameras that I use, the tripods, a whole bunch of really cool little gadgets that make filming a lot easier and allow you to capture those moments when you're out on trail and in the backcountry without having to bring too much gear. So it, we're going to go over a lot of really cool stuff. I've spent years dialing in this system. So uh, hope you hope you guys enjoy. We're just going to let people kind of filter in here. Let me know if that, if the sounds okay, everybody. I'm sure I'm sure you'd let me know if it wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, we got some got some cool stuff here. Like like this like this little gadget. Like what do you what do you guys think think this is? This is uh, <laughs> something that I use. It's super super cool. I use it as part of my filming. Got my got my camera here as well. Some really really cool stuff. I I think I have a total of I have four cameras that I'm gonna be talking about, and uh, I use them all for different purposes, different things. We're gonna be going over that over the course of the live stream. Welcome everybody. We're up to 28 people. As you guys get in here, just to just to reiterate, we're gonna be going over all of the gear that I use for filming when out on trail, when in the backcountry. Um, different cameras, different equip tripods, clips, tips, tricks, whole bunch of stuff. I'll go over. Um, I'll open it up for questions at the at the end. Um, until then, I'll just kind of run run through everything, and uh, I'll have links in the video description if you guys want to check that out after the after the live stream. I'll drop those in there for everything that I talked about today, so you can go check it out for yourself if you want. So there's. For those of you who follow the channel very closely, you you might notice when I switch between different cameras. And depending on the video, I'll bring different cameras on trail with me, just based on a lot of the time the quality that I want. As well. it's kind of balancing quality versus weight savings um, for the trip. So when I'm when I'm going on a trip or I'm trying to film and I don't really care about weight too much, that's when I'll bring the XT4 camera. So this is the Fujifilm. XT4. It's a mirrorless camera, APC um, size lens, so it's not full frame. But let's let's get it underneath underneath the camera here, uh, so you can see that it has a pretty big lens. This is a pretty honking honking camera. But what I like about it, it has a flip out screen, which is really nice, so that I can make sure that I'm in focus and I can see what I'm filming, how everything's framed. And then on top of here, I have uh, Viltrox 13 millimeter lens this lens gives me that kind of nice wide shot and it has a 1.4 aperture so i get really nice really nice bokeh off of that so i'll, t I'll show you guys um here's this is a video where i filmed pretty much everything with this camera it's uh it's the um decathlon versus rei so you can see that blurry background and stuff that's from the camera that that i'm using on here or the or the, the fuji film camera yeah, so that's that's kind of the main camera that you'll see when I'm when I'm filming more talking head type stuff, or um, if I'm in the studio, or if I'm going to a spot where I have car access, or if I'm only going on an overnight, then I'll bring that camera. It just gives you that really good quality that you don't get with the other cameras that we're going to be talking talking about today. And on the bottom of this camera, I'll t I'll show you guys show you guys that. So I have this this clip made by Ulanzi, and this is awesome because it's a quick quick release clip. So what I can do is I attach that clip to the bottom, and then I attach uh, this little bit here onto a tripod or anything else I want to clip the camera to, and then I can just slide it in there. This is probably yeah. There we go, and it's really easy just to release it by pressing this button. And if I turn this, I can lock it. So. I use that with my tripod. This is the the tripod that I use. It's a ultralight carbon fiber tripod with the the clip on top there. This thing just unfolds really easily, really quickly, and it extends to almost my full height. Sometimes I have to add an extender if I really want it to be tall enough. But um, this is an awesome, super lightweight tripod. It's about a pound, and it's nice and compact. I'll bring this when I'm going on um, on trips and I want to bring my big camera. All right, I think that's everything with the big camera that I wanted. Nope, one more thing with the big camera that I want to talk about, and that's an ND filter. So when you're in very bright light, sometimes it makes sense to add kind of like sunglasses 
onto your camera in order to be able to get that blurry background effect. And that's, that's where the, the ND filter comes into play. So I screw this onto the lens and then I can um, keep the aperture low so that I get that nice blurry background and, and good effect. Uh, yeah, so that's for the big camera. In order to uh, record audio, um, I'm using a wireless microphone system made by Ceramonic. I love wireless systems because I don't have to worry about walking around a tent and catching a wire or anything like that. And these ones are nice because I can attach a, a lavalier, um, a lavalier onto it, which is sorry. I keep switching to the wrong uh, <laughs> to the wrong thing. So actually, let's 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 switch this switch this uh, do a little rotation here. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. That's a better view <laughs> for everybody. So. With these little guys, I clip one onto me and then one onto my camera. And then I'll use a lavalier attached into one of the mics. And this is what uh, this is what I'll use to record to you. So you'll sometimes see this little fuzzy thing on here. This is just a little windscreen that um, just blocks some of the wind so that if it is windy out, then I'm not gonna be getting a whole bunch of wind noise uh, in, in the camera picking getting picked up. So. Yeah, this, this is a very great little system. It's it's not cheap, but it's super effective. And I love that it comes in this case that also acts as a charger. So when I'm out on long trips, sometimes I'll run through batteries a lot if I'm filming multiple videos. So this will charge up the little devices inside of there every time I put them in there, which is really, really nice feature. And then we're moving on to um, the, the other kind of thing that I started using more a few years ago but i've kind of stopped using it quite as much and that's um and that's the gopro so this is just a gopro hero 10 i think shouldn't be blurred out if it's right in front of me so i i, I saw that comment in there and the gopro is really nice because it's super durable and then if you're using the enduro batteries in there which are the ones with the the white there then it's gonna work really well in cold temperatures. I've taken it down to minus 20 and had no problems with recording. And you can do some cool things with the GoPro, like set it up for time lapses and as well as time it so that the time lapse will, after like an you can set it so after an hour, it'll stop the time lapse and turn off the GoPro. Or another cool feature with it is that you can set it to turn on at a specific time and then have it do a time lapse or record any sort of video. So I'd use that trick um, once or twice where I knew I was going to be waking up around 7 a.m. So I set the GoPro to start recording outside of my tent at that time and then I'd get out of the tent and that way I don't need to get out of the tent, set up the camera, get back in the tent, pretend I'm, I'm getting out of the tent, uh, get out of the tent that way. And you can see I have another quick, quick release system on here. So this is from this one, this is the F22 system from Ulanzi. The, the last system we looked at with the, with the big camera was the F38. So it's a little bit of a bigger, more robust system. With the F22, it's really tiny and it has a whole bunch of different attachments on there as well. So what I, what I, I have, I use that system with the GoPro. So you can see it has a little quick attachment on there. And then I can attach that to a whole bunch of different accessories. Like I have this little clip, which I can clip onto a backpack or it has a, a magnet on the bottom too, so I can clip this onto like a street light or anything magnetic really. And I can just slide slide the GoPro quick release on there and then you're off you're off to the races. And I can quickly release that and switch it out for another device like this little mini tripod here. I love this little mini tripod because I can just set it up on a rock or something if I'm trying to move quickly through a spot where my tripod or what I use for um, most of the time as like a walking tripod, which we'll get into later. I can just put this on a rock and it's gonna stand and I'll be able to take video that way. So these little quick release systems have really made life a lot easier for me. I can just I can I can just move cameras around to different accessories and things a whole lot easier. Another little one that I think is is really cool is this mouth bite piece. So this slides onto a standard GoPro mount and you can also bite down on this so if I'm doing something like I want to show um, show setting up a guy line or putting in a tent stake, then I can bite it down on this and then use two hands in order to, to do that. So it's it's super useful for those for those kind of shots. 
that's that's the GoPro the GoPro stuff. I think one of my favorite things recently is definitely definitely this this mini tripod. This thing is is super cool, and you can just screw on the little quick mount there, and it's uh it's nice. So you can see um you can see on Alonzi's Alonzi's website they have a whole bunch of little quick mount stuff on here, um, suction cups. It's yeah, it's a cool little system, and um, I use it for the next part of the system which is having a 360 camera. So you guys may may recognize the 360 camera from videos like this. It kind of looks like I'm using a drone. You can see just, you can't see the, the pole that I'm using in order to extend the 360 camera because it, it gets rid of it by using two different, um, two different lenses. So the 360 camera is, is, is awesome. Yeah. So it's just, you can see there's, there's one lens there, another lens there. Then I have this little rubber cap that I put, that I put on there. Um, and what I'll do with this is you can see it also has a quick, quick mount on there and I'll attach this to a selfie pole, which you can see right here. So you just slide that on and then I have a selfie pole. I'll, uh, you can see, I'll show you how far this thing extends uh, in, in one second here. So yeah, you, three three meters. I get three meters of, of distance basically across this entire room. And then I'll hold on to the pole right next to me and the pole just disappears, which is really cool. Kind of magic magic system for uh, for the Insta360 and it creates those those drone-like shots, which is something that I'm, I'm really getting into and uh and think is a is a cool little addition because in a lot of places i go um you can't you can't use drones in national parks and and things like that so being able to get a drone like effect with the 360 camera is is quite cool and all right so that's that's kind of the 360 side of things um i'll also attach the, the 360 camera also will just clip into any of the other little things i want there so I can just drop this mini tripod down somewhere and I get 360 coverage around me. So if I'm scrambling through a rock field or something like that, then I can throw down a little tripod and it gets every view that I could ever want. And this just fits easily into a pocket, this little system here. So it's, yeah, really, really cool. Big, big fan of um, the quick release as well as the 360 camera because it's, the 360 camera just has um, like a, a eighth inch like camera, standard ca camera screw on the bottom. Um, so it's, that's really annoying to like twist into things if you want to start using it. So the quick release is, is really, really quite nice. And all right. So, um, let's move on to probably what you see me using the most for filming and, and that's going to be my phone. So this, this entire video here was, was filmed on my phone. Uh, this is the minus 40 winter. So the phone that I'm using is the S S 22. Um, just the regular version and I, I'm, I'm loving it so far. It, it does really well in low light um, Better not as good as my big camera, but better than like a GoPro and stuff and just creates takes really good really good footage So the, the way that I use the phone mostly is with With probably the coolest tripod system. Everyone is always asking me about my my tracking poles so the tracking poles that I use are the Comperdell Comperdell tracking poles. This is called the camera staff. And what's neat about these, not only do they work really well as tracking poles with this giant cork handle, which is cool, but you unscrew this little top bit and then you get a standard 1 8 inch camera screw on there. So I'll give you a look at that. You can see, see that 1 8 inch camera screw on there. And if, if I'm not using that, I can just take the little cap screw it screw it on there and I can use this for like a tracking pole tent still anything like that and it's a cool system because if if I screw on that quick release mount like I have right here then I can attach things like the Insta360 or a GoPro basically anything that I want to attach a quick release mount to but what I usually do is I'll attach um, this camera mount to it so this is just a spring-loaded mount there using gopro gopro mounts and i can just slide my camera into it and then i have this uh this really cool 
really cool filming system. This is this is my old camera. This is the S22e. I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe even an older older phone than that. <laughs> so this is a great system because I can be hiking with this with this mount just out there, and then as soon as I want to stop and take take a photo or a video, I can just drop the phone in there and what's nice is with the because the the phone is fairly light and the tripod is is a trekking pole I can just shove the trekking pole into the ground have the camera on there and then I can do like walk by shots and things like that it's it's a really really neat system this this is the system I used on the great divide trail without the quick mounts just a um, a camera mount screwed onto one of these staffs and it allowed me to get so much footage so quickly it was yeah, change change the game for me. And being able to attach like the the Insta three sixty or GoPro on there, just all an interchangeable system has been has been really nice. You can see I'll 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 show you again. So you have the quick mount quick mount on there. You can just slide slide it right in there, no no problem. And then I'll also use other camera mounts than than that. This is a nice little compact one that I also I'll bring as like a backup so I can just slide that in there and then slide slide a phone into the mount and what's nice about this is it has a tilt feature as well so it's compact as well as having a tilt so you can't you can't really beat beat this little mount here as a as a backup op option all right so I think we're, we're kind of getting through a lot of a lot of stuff here super quickly with um, my entire system. There's a couple more items that I do want to share with you guys. Um, the first one being this little contraption here that I that I use. This is a small rig. You guys able to hear me still? Is the live stream still going? Yeah. Okay. So this is a little small rig case um, with an SD card. SD card slot so I can bring extra SD cards with me some micro SD cards some standard SD cards so that if I fill up my other ones then I'm all set with with having these and what's really nice about this whole system too is when I'm traveling down to the states or anywhere else I can bring my extra sim card in here with my sim card pokey thing and uh, change out change out my sim card to my phone so I use Google Fi when I'm heading down to the states or internationally and it's really really good and then I bring this little tool on trips with me as well N not always when i'm going on like a backcountry trip because this thing is pretty heavy but it has a whole bunch of different camera tools on there so i can tighten things up um yeah that needs a little little tighten there so <laughs> this is this is nice just to have because when things start loosening off you don't want to be trying to find like a a coin or something to to be tightening tightening things up so yeah that's that's a quick overview of of all the camera gear and systems that I use when I'm out on my trips. If you guys have any questions, we can get it. We can get into those now. Um, let me know. Drop them into the into the comments here because uh, I'm happy to chat about any aspects of this. I think I think it's kind of cool to see the behind the scenes of how other how how people are filming their trips. I know when I've gone on trips with other creators, it's cool to see their systems. Like I know Stephen with My Life Outdoors, he carries like his, he carries a, a big camera like this all the time that's why the quality of his videos are so good but it's it's heavy and uh, takes up a lot of space i like to move a little bit quicker to have a little bit more of a versatile system and uh just um yeah just just be able to move quickly and 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 get shots really quickly okay renee if you start if you just start starting to film what system would you start with and i'd, pr I'd just start with my phone and probably just hand handheld hold my phone maybe maybe get like a little maybe get like a little um one of these these guys little tripod and then you don't even need to get a phone mount um you don't even need to get the quick release system you can just get the get the phone mount screw onto this and you can use this to, to hold your phone up and and take video as well as as a little tripod i think that's probably the easiest cheapest quick system after that i'd probably start introducing things like the the camera staff or a tripod in order to just stabilize your shots and be able to walk away away from um, away from your camera while you're filming and something else that I just missed that I just remembered I missed where is it yeah take a look through all my stuff here okay here found it 
<laughs> so this is a little fuzzy microphone. This is, uh, this is my old one that I used with my Samsung S10e, but I have a new one with a USB-C plug on this and I'll plug this into my phone. Let's see if I can do that with this. So I'll plug this into my phone and then I have a microphone with a wind buff, wind muff on it slash dead cat. So I get better audio and it blocks the wind. So that's a fun little extra that's not too expensive that will help with, um, that, that'll help with the wind as well as the quality of your, of your audio. JS, what is the weight for your setup? When, when I'm bringing the big, big camera, the weights, I think probably around two, two to three pounds with the camera batteries and the tripod. When I'm just doing my phone setup, the weights like un easily under a pound, like half, half a pound, if that. So it's, it's quite, quite light, probably, probably like 300 grams, um, for, for just, just the camera. And then you can add like another hundred grams for the, uh, Insta 360. And then maybe this is a carbon fiber pole that I use for the Insta 360. And it's, it's probably also like another hundred, 150 grams. Do you film anything underwater from Chris? What do you use for that GoPro phone? I'd probably use my GoPro. Um, the GoPro does really well underwater and it's gonna get better quality. The GoPro is gonna get better quality than the Insta360. Um, the GoPro just does better in low light compared to the Insta360. If it's very clear, bright water, then maybe I'd bring the Insta360 just to get some cool shots, but otherwise, probably, probably the GoPro. Crystal, did you mention anything about batteries you bring or for cameras or your charging situation? So for the big camera, I have two batteries in here and then I have a charging station that'll, that'll use to, to charge it up. So nothing too crazy. I can usually film for about two hours with the big camera without, um, off of those two batteries, about an, an hour, an hour or so per battery with the Insta360. I don't bring any extra batteries. I just plug, charge it when I need it. It'll usually get through a full day or actually more than that, like two or three days of, of filming. And with the GoPro, I'll bring one extra battery usually and uh, then charge it at night. For my phone, I'll just, I just have a standard charge. My phone usually gets, I usually get through two days with pretty regular filming if I have it in airplane mode. So I don't really need to charge it too much. Sean. Have you used the GoPro Max battery for winter stuff or do you just bring multiple normal batteries? So it, I use the GoPro Enduro battery for winter stuff. That's the, the white one here. And it works really well, really well in winter. So um, I never find it, well, down to minus 20. Um, the regular batteries die at like freezing, I find. Any recommendations for a budget alternative to the GoPro? Um, Sean, not, not really, unfortunately. Hey guys, so um, I accidentally just turned off my entire my entire computer. <laughs> so uh, any anything that you guys had chatted about before then is uh, I, I don't I don't see it in the in the chat. But what I was gonna say, I was gonna answer any budget alternatives to the GoPro, and I've tested I've tested ones out. I'm not I'll be I'll be honest with you. Um, so I don't, I don't have, I don't have the, the other setup, but here's, so here's what I was doing to test out budget options. And I had the regular GoPro right here, but all the budget options were quite terrible. So I, uh, I just axed, axed that. Yeah. And Mike, do you plan on upgrading to the newest Insta360? Um, probably not anytime soon. Like if, if. If they wanted to send me one, then then I'd take it. I'd film with it and, and let you guys know how, how it does. But the the X2 does pretty good. The X3 would be nice, but yeah, I'm not I'm not too too concerned about that. If you guys have any other questions, drop them quickly. But and then I'll I'll end this podcast. Uh, hopefully not by by turning my computer off this time. Jessica, what editing program do you use and do you find it pretty user-friendly when started when you started editing videos? So 
I started off with, I forget the name of the editing software. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't remember, but it was, it was free and it was very like not easy to use, but kind of straightforward. And then I moved on to Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use now. And it does, uh, it does everything that I need it to do. It, it works very well. Um, a lot of people use it. There's a lot of resources out there. It's not super easy to use, but after a couple videos and watching some tutorials and practicing a little bit, you, you can pick it up pretty quick. I'm, I'm not a great editor and I was able to, to um, pick it up pretty quickly, I think. Logan, how do you pack your camera gear, in particular your Fuji film, to keep it protected while hiking? Um, while keeping your pack light. So let's see, I just pack, pack, when I'm bringing my big camera, I pack everything into this red dry bag here. And this fits the big camera, my microphone, ND filter, um, like little tools and stuff like that. And yeah, it keeps, keeps it dry, not, not protected. It's not cushioned, but I'll just make sure to pack that in a place um, where it's not gonna get jostled around too much and I just don't throw my pack around too much. And the, the camera's been fine from packing it into my pack. It actually gets more damage from me not setting the tripod up properly and then the camera just falling falling over. I, there's, lots, there's lots of B-roll, there's a lot of footage out there of me swearing and then running at the camera as it's slowly tilting and then hitting the ground. I, sh I should really make a compilation of that or, or, or challenge other people to make a compilation because I know that doesn't just happen to me. All right, any, any other questions from you guys before we, we shut this down after that little, that little hiccup there? It was, yeah, I should make a blooper video. Yeah, it was great sharing this. I get asked a lot what I use for filming, so that's why I wanted to make this video and just kind of let you guys know about it and the systems that I use. It's uh, yeah, it's been a long journey to get here from from just starting to film with the camera that I had that, that I had before. I think that's the one that I was using as my kind of like prop camera. Yeah, the Nexus. I think this is the Nexus Five, the first the first camera I use. You can see it's nice and shattered there. Um, it's uh, yeah, and then I switched the Samsung S10e. But this, uh, you go back to my earliest videos, this is, everything was filmed on the Nexus 5 with no microphones, just a, a little little handheld tripod that I'd prop up on logs and stuff like that. It was, it was pretty fun. Brent Fong, do you script? So I don't have like detailed scripts that I follow. Like I, I don't have a teleprompter or anything like that, but I do have like an outline of what I want to talk to you just, just to make sure that I'm not missing things. And I'll, re I'll refer to that every once in a while. Sometimes you'll see, uh, you'll see a little piece of paper like just beside me or in a shot, um, especially when I'm doing the the more like talking head type stuff. And, and that's just my notes where I have the different uh, points that I wanna make throughout the video. Yeah, Sean, it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty scary when the cam when you when you're watching your camera just just start falling and you're like, oh my God, that Especially like when I upgraded to this camera, it's 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 not super expensive the X the Fujifilm XT4, but it's not cheap. This is like this is still thousands of dollars that's sitting right here, and uh, yeah, when it starts falling, I I get I get a little a little uh, scared every single time. There, it, it has issues like the the viewfind the the, um, the EVF is is loose. The this this it fell when this was sticking out and it it's now loose. Um, sorry, by this, I mean the, the flippy screen it's, it's yeah, not in great shape, but yeah, it does the job. The X-T4 I find is a nice middle, like middle ground camera. It's not full frame, but it's relatively inexpensive films in 4k 60 frames per second. So you can get some good shots with that compared to going up to more expensive cameras that will get, give you better footage and you'll get full frame, but you're, you're paying, you're paying for that. That's for sure. All right, we're gonna sh we're gonna shut it down, guys. I'll probably do another live stream not too far from now, but more of like a, a general Q and A, um, just to kind of touch base and and say hello. This is more more to kind of share. This is more to share my camera gear and just have that have that available. So when people ask, I can I can share this video with them. It was nice chat with you guys. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you later.